For 2021, Google has gone about things a little differently to the previous couple of years. Instead of launching a light and nimble affordable Pixel, it's gone all in on creating unique flagships instead. The Pixel 6 is one of this year's most hotly anticipated phones, and we've been using it for the past couple of weeks. I'm Cam Bunton from Pocketlint, and this is our review. And while you're here, if you could tap the like button, subscribe, and the notification bell, that would be lovely. We've spoken a lot about the design in our unboxing and first impressions video, but it's safe to say it's quite unique. Part of the distinctiveness is down to the design of the frame and the bezel. It's very rectangular and right-angled and reminds us of the old Nokia Lumia models, and I personally really like that. And the flat screen makes it easy to type on as well. Despite those right-angled corners, the frame is still rounded to make it more comfortable in your hand, a feel that's further enhanced by the slight curves in the glass on the back of the phone. Now, the size and the weight mean it's hardly the most nimble smartphone on the market, but Google has tried to alleviate some of that stretching by adding a one-handed mode in Android 12. Similar to Apple's reachability feature, it lets you drag down content from the top of the screen further down, so you can reach it with your thumb. That unique protrusion on the back spreading across its width means you can lie the phone on its back and it won't wobble, and overall it's hard to fault the design and build quality too much. That frame has a sturdy feel to it, and it's durable too thanks to having Corning Gorilla Glass Victus and an IP68 rating against water and dust ingress. The buttons on the right are clicky and responsive, but don't feel overly solid, and the camera ridge seems to scrape fluff and other minutiae, collecting it on the back of the phone from our pocket. Now, of course, our review unit is the Stormy Black model, but there's also Seafoam Green, or Sorta Seafoam, and Kinda Coral, both of which look much nicer. And if we were choosing, one of those is what we would go for. Switching to the OLED display and the HD Plus Resolution 20x9 panel can reach up to 90Hz refresh rates. That ensures animations on screen are fluid and sharp, especially in the general user interface. It's adept at color and contrast with 24-bit color capability, so that means it can reach up to 16 million colors, supporting wide gamuts and with enough contrast and brightness to make HDR10 content look its best. Watching movies on Netflix, Disney and Prime is thoroughly enjoyable. A big part of this is obviously down to the qualities of the display and the image processing. Dynamic range is very good with bright spots in HDR titles piercing bright without losing texture and detail in the darker areas. The darkest parts are inky and deep, while colours have a vibrant and attractive tone. So whether you watch something natural and realistic like Afterlife on Netflix, or something with a bit more colour and hyper-realness to it like Free Guy on Disney+, Plus, the panel is adept at showing the movie colours in the way that you think they should be. Now it's not a perfect panel. Being a little nitpicky, the colours do shift a little when looking at it from an angle. So if you look at a white screen and adjust the angle you're looking at it, you'll start to see some minor green and pink tinting. It's rarely an issue though, really. All in all, it's a very solid display. In its announcement event for Android 12, Google waxed lyrical about how it designed Android 12 to be all about you and personalization to make it unique to your tastes. The marketing campaign around the Pixel 6 has all been about being unique, being cool and being you as well. And it's Android 12 that lets you express that most clearly. While Android has always been very customizable, Android 12 has taken it up a notch with the Pixel and created something that's aesthetically more tunable and tweakable, but more importantly, adds a dash of whimsy to the mix. One of the big changes is how theming works across the entire system. So unlike previous iterations, it's not just a case of changing accents in some menus. It changes your entire color scheme, and, and it does so for the built-in Google Keyboard and Google apps like Gmail, Messages, Phone, and Calculator, among others, and anywhere else on your phone that isn't a third-party application. In the customization screen, you can choose colors yourself, but it automatically pulls out the prominent colors in your wallpaper. So as soon as you change your wallpaper, all the colors change for all the layers of the interface and the Google apps. It's pretty fantastic. The only part that lets it down somewhat is the themed icons, an element that's currently in beta. This changes your app icons to match the colored theme as well, but sadly only works with Google's pre-installed apps. It doesn't work with any third-party app icons at the moment, and so if you enable it, you end up with a mishmash of color icons interspersed with themed ones. It doesn't look good. Widgets are up there as one of the stars of the show too. Again, for Google's own apps and system functions like weather, photos, and clock, you can add widgets of various sizes and shapes. The clock widget, for example, can be scalloped, or round, or a bulbous X shape. 
For the apps that have this added functionality, it's a nice change. We hope it's adopted by third parties too, because again, if you use the age-old widget from third-party apps, the juxtaposition of styles is quite jarring. While new pretty things are always welcome, Android 12 has a lot of useful new features too, particularly around privacy and security. Privacy Dashboard lets you glance at your permissions and see which apps have had access to things like your location, camera and mic. It lets you easily disable access for any that seem to be acting suspiciously. What's more, there are big switches and the quick setting shade that let you disable mic and camera access completely. Now moving on to performance, and while the design was the first big talking point of the Pixel 6, it's the processor inside that makes the second big talking point. Google has gone down a similar route to Apple and now uses its own home-baked processor called Tensor. Google's claim is that you'll get an 80% boost in performance over the Pixel 5, but it's not just about raw CPU performance. Google wanted to use it as a brain for all of its computational machine learning elements. Everything from the algorithms that figure out all the advanced camera features, image and language processing and everything else are powered by a neural engine in the Tensor chipset. With that said, there was nothing about the everyday performance of the phone that gave us cause for concern. It's fast, it's responsive and can handle any game you throw at it. We didn't have any instances of stuttering or lag in any of our games regardless of how demanding. It did get a tiny bit warm at times in a particular spot on the left edge, but never so hot that it was uncomfortable to hold. Likewise, the battery inside is similar in capacity to what you'll find in many Android phones. At 4,614 mAh typical capacity, there's enough to ensure you get through a full workday. In fact, even on our heavier days, we struggle to completely drain it. On lighter days, with a moderate two or three hours of screen usage, we'd get to bed with about 40% left over. Its 30 watt charging capabilities aren't lightning quick, but are enough to ensure you're not wasting hours waiting for it to refill when empty. And if you use the adaptive charging feature when you plug it in at night, it'll make sure it doesn't charge too fast and keep your battery in peak health for a longer period of time. Moving on to cameras and the regular Pixel 6 features a dual camera system. The main sensor is a 50 megapixel one and the 12 megapixel sensor features in the ultra wide. As is usually the case for Google's phone cameras, there's lots of computational work being done behind the scenes for processing colors, light and detail. In pretty much any scenario, we found it highly capable. And that doesn't complicate things with lots of additional settings and options. It's similar to iPhone in the way that it lets you just point and shoot. And the ISP and algorithms then process the picture and make it look good. Motion mode will allow you to shoot either long exposure shot to produce effects like light trails on moving cars or shoot an action pan where you keep the subject in focus while it moves by, then blurring the background to make the subject look like it's moving quickly. Both modes are currently in beta and you can tell. For the action pan, we'd often have to try multiple frames to get the shot that we wanted. With a child running or riding a scooter as an example, it would sometimes get the edge detection wrong and blur parts of the face, or not blur parts of the backdrop that weren't the person or the subject. Use it on something like a toy car or anything with clean lines and the effect is really quite magical, as is the long exposure that lets you create effects like light trails or milky moving water completely handheld. No tripod required. Again, it can take a few times to get an effect that looks decent, but it's pretty remarkable that it's possible at all. However, as magical as that is, it doesn't quite come close to the genuine witchcraft behind Magic Eraser. It's a new tool in Google Photos that lets you remove unwanted objects or items from your photographs. So you've taken a lovely landscape or cityscape and there's something in there ruining the shot, so you can get rid of it. You open the Photos app, you can tap the Tools and Magic Eraser button and then circle the thing or the person that you want to remove and it'll automatically detect the object's edges, get rid of it and generate colors, textures and detail that matches the background. The smaller the object and simpler the texture of whatever is in the backdrop, the more effective it is. If you have a person photobombing and standing with nothing but sky behind them, that's an easy fix. But if there's a wall or something with complex lines and shading, then it will probably look like a dodgy Photoshop with smudges, mismatched lines and weird shadows. It's so it's not so magical that it fills in the scene perfectly, but it does do a really great job for the most part and unless you zoom in really close, it genuinely looks like the thing is just gone. 
One other vital new inclusion for portrait photography is something Google calls Real Tone, and it uses its image processing to make sure people's skin tones look natural. So unlike previous camera versions, it's not biased to white skin. So regardless of what skin tone you have, it should make it look more realistic. It won't over contrast it or make it look like a green tint or make it ashy and grey. Even in night mode photography in low light, the Pixel delivers among the best results we've seen from any smartphone. Details are clear, but crucially, Google's approach seems to be not just to brighten the highlights until almost the point of overexposing and adding contrast to make it look sharp, it also effectively lifts shadows and colour, making it look balanced and almost colourful. Brighter areas are kept from overexposing and they retain their detail. You can use night mode on both of the cameras, but the ultra-wide struggles a bit more once the light levels really drop. If there are no bright nearby sources of light, like a street light, you'll probably end up with a noisy grainy shot from that. Overall, Google's focus on creating a phone that's visually distinct from everything else on the market while also investing in its homegrown silicon suggests that it is taking the smartphone thing very seriously. The hardware matched with Google's computational work in the background and the new whimsical and delightful Android 12 software elevate the Pixel 6 to more than the sum of its parts. It's a genuinely great phone that delivers in all the right ways, and it makes you smile while it does it. And it doesn't cost too much either. What's not to love about that? I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on pretty much every social media network going, so you can reach out to me on those if you want to, or use the comments down below. And if you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up. Subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.